on? Hi, everybody. How many what? How many different like live streams have you had? Oh, you mean how many shows? How many shows? Uh, many. Too many, many, many. Too many. many to count so far. Too many to count so far. Maybe 40. Yeah, but not 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 different days. Just uh. So uh. Hi. Hello. Not trying to be rude. Hi, Joe. Hey. <laughs> I was just telling him one of my. Did you like my last time? I yes. Got. We had yeah. we had some uh, some different sayings. So uh, I'll show you what's going on right now. This is a tailgate. I've been able to use the truck. Um, here's my coffee setup. 75% coffee sludge, 25% water, filtered, of course. And when I was in the office, Dan, who's right there, said, hey, do you want some dog food? You have a dog. Because there was some. Somebody donated this. Well, as a matter of fact, I didn't even realize the significance of this. But my dog is here with me. I uh, I brought him tonight because I was going to be leaving all day and I didn't want to leave him at home until my husband got back. Um, so I took him. I took him. But I forgot to feed him. I forgot the fact that what I was doing would mean he wouldn't have dinner. So I didn't realize and, until just now and I was like, oh yeah. He's probably hungry, although he's been just sleeping. Uh, I'm just talking to the camera. Do you want a good shot? What is that? You should probably focus on that pot with uh, the, the 50 rats crawling. Oh, yeah. No, I can't see it from here. That is amazing. There's a lot of rats across the street. You can't see it from here? No, not in this camera. Uh, that's oh, good. my gosh. It is amazing, isn't it? Because there's... there's uh, more than a dozen. You can probably see the... Well over a dozen. I'd say oh. close to two dozen. Oh yeah, easily. There's at least twenty. I can see them. Yeah. It's it, it looks like a sea of so, rats and mice, rats. and and those are serious deals because uh, in Portland they carry fa fatal diseases. There was a PSU professor cleaning out a shed. Didn't wear a mask. There inhaled are dozens dust. Dozens of those little bastards. Yeah. Yeah. There didn't you. didn't wear a mask. You should wear a mask if you're going to clean out a shed Look that might that. have... Uh... Look at that. That's incredible. Anyway. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Anyhow, sorry about that. That's all right. Hey, Mike. What's going on? How are you doing? Hey, did you see the... Have you seen the call recently? She's in Seattle. She is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, how's she doing? I mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I'll call her. Yeah, she's got a lot going for her. Um, anyway, I have a little hummus cup, so I thought I would wolf down this the rest of it. Kind of funny. You know who'd probably like my garlic hummus? It's my dog. He's like, oh, don't, don't eat it because of me. Okay. He's going to be so happy. He doesn't get canned food. 
So this is the Occupy Street right here. Normally I wouldn't buy this. Um, in order to get humanely treated animals or you know food, I do that for what I buy for him as well. And uh, it usually means vegetarian or fish. I have to buy fish and dog food. Because because of that donation, I'm not in a bind where I didn't feed my dog. I mean, I feel bad that I totally forgot that little detail when I decided to bring him. But uh, he'll like this garlic hummus and a little piece of bread. What a treat. He loves wet dog food. He just doesn't get it very often. And my dog is the sweetest animal. And I'm just thinking about what, what Mo is going through. If you haven't seen the interview with Mo yet, please look because the police took her dog. All right, they, they took her companion, her best friend, her protector, and she doesn't know that he's safe because they're completely callous about what they did. And their purpose was to get rid of, quote, dirty homeless people, dirty street people. That, that was their purpose. So they take their dogs. Okay, so look at that. Happy dog. This little buddy, if something like that happened to him, I mean, it's just amazing to even try to fathom what it would be like to have your little guy taken by cops who are harassing you intentionally this way, who make it purposefully difficult. They tell her, you can have him back only after 10 days of being quarantined because of rabies. When she shows them his rabies shot tag. Let me just eat it off the floor, baby. You'll be clean. Right here. Get down there. <laughs> you know, rabies shot tag. I'm gonna close the door, babe. There you go. Um, and papers. You know, they, they show, she showed them. And, uh, Nevertheless, they took him. So after six days, they said she had to come get him. But they also told her that she couldn't have him until 10 days. It was six days was in little print on this form that she found herself. So it's almost as if they wanted to, say, destroy the dog at day seven when she's told to come back at day 10. They're very concerned at their intent considering they already admitted that this was malicious. So please watch if you have not yet and see what's happening to Mo and her best friend. I am going to be taking this camera tomorrow morning. We're gonna go out to Troutdale. I expect we'll be there at nine. I'll have to check and see what their hours are. Um, I wanna make sure that they're open. So, uh, Mitchell looks relatively exactly almost the same the last time I was here in two days. Which is great. I mean, not that the morphing isn't cool too, but the fact that it's kind of stable. A recognizable thing. Remember the days where we find it blown over or everything shattered on the ground or things stolen? longer. It looks good. Anyway, I just wanted everybody to see my happy dog. So I fed my dog on camera because I was talking about Mo and what happened. Did you hear what they told her?
about her dog? They took her dog when she was at the waterfront. She had him, her, the strap wrapped around her leg. Um, and they said that he wasn't, she wasn't holding him on a leash. But she was, it was wrapped around her leg. Then I guess at some point, while they were wrestling the dog away from her, the dog bit somebody. So now they have to take him because he needs a rabies check. But she showed them, they have to put him in quarantine for 10 days. But she showed them his paperwork and his license that he's had his rabies shot, good for three years. And uh, that's when Pablo talked to the police and they said, well, you know, um, it's Fleet Week and we don't want um, dirty street people and, and drift or dirty street people and uh, people passing through. What do they call the uh, transients? Tran they, well, they didn't say transient, but they said drifters or something like that. We don't want them, so we're taking their dogs. He he said this. Pablo and Mo both testified yeah, that they said on, that. Come on, that's come on, Mary. Oh, I don't like the word transient. Yeah. What well, I say is the people that come in like pretty every time. Anyway, once once he said that, uh, his buddy was like, "Shut up." <laughs> the truth is a little bit, you know, you're flapping your jaw. So. Hold on to the, the usual story of the Right. So but, you know, it's a fleet so. week. Who is the authority? Police? Uh, they so. leave. Hey, they leave on Monday. So, come on. That's that's really. I don't, I, that's you know what? That's really far fetched, that story right there. For them to even come up and then, now, if the dog is on the leash. They have no reason to be even talking to her. If the dog the bit somebody, then they have they can come up there and, and question it. Right. You know. Well, I am going with them tomorrow to Troutdale to get that dog, if possible. <laughs> but take the live stream with me. Well, it, it doesn't make no sense, Mary, because if the dog was taken for 10 days, it has nine more days, and no matter whoever she gets, it is not going to further the 10-day quarantine. It's not going to quicken that. Well, the thing is, is that she has proof of the rabies shots, and nobody really talked to her about that. And well, so we're going to go and see what happens and find out what the situation is. Hey, I just want to find yeah. out what the situation well, is. They were being dicks, all right? That's all that they were doing. They were being dicks to these people. And so maybe they made a mistake. Oops. And now she's going to take the dog back. They just want to clear these people out. That's, that was their goal. Too. It, actually, it was. I don't think it's that. It was? It was. Oh, you're not talking. I don't well, think it's that, are you? No. <laughs> we're going to find out. I think that the uh, con the well, we dog in the county is privately owned, privatized, and they're looking to get more people in there so that they can get more funding from the government. Really? Yeah, I think it's an allied thing. Yeah. <laughs> Humane society, in this case. Yeah. <laughs> Good theory, though. It's been Let's find out, Alex Jones. Find out. Humane society. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. The Humane Society of Wallet Draining. Um, so yeah, anyway, we're going to go and find out, it'll be another, yeah. it'll be another, um, adventure. Like when I went to OHSU with Ryan's family, do we know, <laughs> is he just in jail? And, and I think those people might've been just people that he enlisted, even though I had met them before. I'm thinking. Have you gone to the German consulate yet here? You know, you had suggested that, but I don't know. Their cousins, the cousin who was 40 something and didn't know that her uh, her cousin was younger than her when he was 20. <laughs> it's not a close family. He was born either now or two well, generations ago. Yeah, so how would she know? Anyway, it is interesting, but that's what we did on live stream. We ran over to OS, OHSU, that was an and we talked to the cops. That was a, that was it was, it episode. was like, it was like cops, wasn't it? I was it? tuned in for the next episode, and nothing really happened. Nothing happened. It was like it just. 
Where's Ryan? Oh, he's in jail with a hundred and fifty thousand dollar bail, and we'll never see him. End of this story. End of story. Because yeah. uh, unless you get a hundred fifty thousand dollars, you're not gonna get the real story <laughs> until court date. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> well, court date is for identity theft, and uh, that's pretty serious. Very that, yeah. serious, and, and and that's not an accusation, Mary. That is a for sure thing. Who's got that? Uh, remember Ryan? Ryan? Ryan, like the river. Oh, okay. wait, yes, I do. All right. Oh. So he's been accused of identity theft, and his cousins say there's no way that happened. Accused. But we're not sure if those are his cousins. So they uh, gonna come up with a hundred. A hundred, a hundred thousand dollars. One hundred fifty thousand well, dollars. Actually, he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Yeah. He's got it. So. Because he sold his house, and uh, Wolf actually verified that because he was talking about giving a donation, and um, that is free and clear. So he has the cash, and he'll bail himself out, I assume. And he'll come here and he'll straighten it out. Can I ask you a question? And then we'll find out. And I, I want to talk to his cousins and say, how do you not know that your cousin is 20 years younger than you? Can I ask you guys if you know anything about what happened last night as far as the Right to Dream 2's issue that they had with, with Occupy Portland because of a certain promise that was made for 52 pence? Uh, by, okay. So, by, what, what, well, we, we don't were, know. We, we don't. We, we don't know. To give them tents, Mike? Well, well uh, Mary, was Mary, do you want to explain her? Yeah, no, you know what? I want to find out like you do, but I'll wait for the details before I talk well, about I, it. Well, I've talked to her about it for an extensive go Yeah, I'm yeah. going to stay out of that one. I, I don't really think that that's... I'm not, that was, I'm not really interested in having that conversation about well, that. Well, it's not a conversation. It's a simple question. Did, did you, if we know, no. Yeah, about 50 tests. There's one for my, I know. What my question was, had you heard anything about a commitment like that? Oh, I've talked to other people about that, and no, we've never heard that before. Now, uh, now, somebody heard him say it, but it didn't sound like an all-in-out promise. It just sounded like, oh, we have him. We have him. Whether or not there's been further conversation about that, we they don't know. Yeah, they thought well, that they well, were going to use them for the action. What's been said is that is at Smokes Council, Wolf has stated to Right to Dream 2 that we had tents available to them and the amount of about <laughs> And I don't recall being at that <laughs> spokes And he Wolf, uh, actually clarified later that they didn't have him for XYZ reason. Wolf uh, called me yesterday and said that he is no longer participating in Occupy due to medical reasons. Oh, what? Uh, hmm. Imagine that. Well, he'll be back, though. Hopefully he's okay. What's medical reasons. Did you ask him what's up with that? I didn't ask him. I just I sent him an email. Stating that, uh, yeah. Maybe we should find out. I'm a little worried about 62. He hasn't shown up for a free journey. Oh, oh, 60 is busy, but I've talked to him recently. Oh, okay. When was the last time you talked to him? Well, he, he was going to make some signs for the first tomorrow. Oh! So we were waiting on those. Oh, you haven't talked to him? Maybe we can, maybe we can do that. <laughs> I just want to get him. Yeah, because that's There's a... somebody there. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Oh, you got any updates? Is there any sports going on that we should know about? Um. Because we have the um, segment 99. That's right, I heard about this. <laughs> sports the sports segment of 99. Alright, sports segment 99. Take one. And now you're making his eyes glow. <laughs> oh my god, that's weird like a cat. <laughs> oh my god, he's got your eyes glowing. It is freaky. Give us a smile. Lots of teeth. Come on, toothy smile. 
Oh, we're not getting the smile. You look like a ghost. No, no, come look. <laughs> <laughs> come look right here. You'll see. <laughs> so, how many people do you think we got tonight sleeping? Are you refereeing tomorrow? Um, nobody asked me, so I don't know. Yeah, I think I'm you're doing. supposed to just show up and start. Yeah, you know, 99 doesn't do that no more. Show up and start doing stuff? Yeah, just show up and start doing stuff. You like to play it? Yeah, 99 likes to know what uh, what his job is, where he's at on board the boat, you know. So there is no more showing up and, and taking charge. You guys planned it out. You guys. Well, are you going to show up and watch? No. Why? Don't even see uh, any reason to. Fun. I I can make my fun. I got fun. But can you have a pulled pork sandwich? Oh yeah, if, if I want a pulled pork sandwich or if I want a Philly steak sandwich. Mmm, Philly steak sandwich. Now that we should have here. What a euro. Yeah. Oh, a euro. Yeah. Euro. Euro. Gyro. Gyro. I don't want a gyro. Real Philly steak sandwich. Gyro. With cheese whiz. Like a, cheese whiz. That's an authentic. That's an abomination. That, that's authentic Philly cheese steak. Okay, but cheese whiz is wrong. Cheese whiz is the authentic Philly cheese steak. Cheese whiz? Sorry to say, sir. Is that made what? by Philadelphia cream cheese? You know what? I don't know. Okay, we used to, you know, cheese Ooh. whiz used to come into cans. Don't do that. Okay, really. you know what I used to use? Steak them. <laughs> I remember Nasty. steak em. Steak em. <laughs> I Those still, were so good. I found it in a supermarket. And it was weird because it was in a in a place where you couldn't find it anywhere. And I had like three oh, people why? in Safeway looking with me for steak em. But <laughs> I remember steak. Em. I know. It was awesome. Steak em? Yeah, like Jiffy Pop popcorn. I remember that too. But that was a long time ago, guys. They still have Jiffy Pop popcorn. Okay. It's like one of the five foods on the shelf you can get still with trans fat. <laughs> I was going to ask, where do, where do you get fair trade coffee from if you're going to buy it? Well, okay, so if you don't mind using big business fair trade, you know, I mean, it's okay. better, but it's not as bad, you know, whatever. Uh, you can go to Freddy's in the natural food section. Oh, natural food section. Does they have, and then I also will buy just organic even if it's not, quote, fair trade, because right now the organic coffee is grown in such a way that it is not having the same labor issue, the same level of that kind of exploitation of entire countries. They're getting a fair price, and they're not doing this industrial deal as much. So it's, it's less exploitative. And if I don't go to so let me see here. Um, okay, Mr. Green Beans has green fair trade coffee, which I will roast. And that saves money, and that's local and awesome. Roast it in your oven? No, I roast it in a little popcorn maker, a little jiffy pop, or whatever you call it, a uh, air poppery, yeah, no, poppery really. too, yeah. Yeah, it has got to be the poppery too, because if you look down, like, okay, so the popcorn cylinder at the bottom, along the bottom, but not on the bottom, just so it's in the tube itself, are vents. That is what sets it apart from, say, a different model of the poppery or some other. It's got to have vents that are in the column at the bottom. If you have that, then you fill up that top tray it's about a third of a cup that you want to put of beans um, maybe a little less and uh, you roast it and it's usually eight minutes or possibly quite a bit longer like 12. just like wait till it sort of turns a certain color and I stir it with a wooden spoon periodically, especially at the beginning. And the chafe will come out. 
or chaff chaff will come out of the blows out. blows out and it smells so good but it's really strong and you have to have it you know you have to have it uh outdoors like you're doing a barbecue oh, okay. I, see it's kind of that's the thing it's it's a great smell when you're outdoors it's a bad smell when you're indoors and i've done this once and i'll never do it again and people do cook it in their oven i i just i don't think that's right it you, smokes can you do it in your microwave? <laughs> i don't think so <laughs> i don't want microwave coffee beans so where popcorn. where else um there's uh uh, our Portland company. What are they called? Uh, there's Boyd's. a no. Uh, it's a little bit upscale. They have um. Wow, Pete. No, not Pete's. Uh, gosh, I can never remember their I'm name. Not gonna say Seattle. Today. No. <laughs> no. Um. R. Starts with an R. River City. The Roaster. The... Well, maybe it's not R. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll remember. I always remember eventually this name. I don't know why I can't. Anyway, that, that they are direct trade. Direct trade, fair trade, equitable trade, fairly traded, farm direct. Anything that indicates that they know who the farmer is and they're not just doing like Starbucks and going into countries and telling them that they will will farm it and will will give you and you'll like it whatever price we pay. That's the problem. Direct trade doesn't do that at the WTO because they cut out all the middlemen so instead of going through like 20 or 40 hands it goes through six or ten the roasters get paid fairly the farmers get paid fairly let's see yeah people literally die because of our coffee system chocolate it's even worse because they actually die in the field because they're shackled they steal children in the Ivory Coast country. They steal their enemy, quote, country kids, neighbors, and shackle them and put them in the field, and they die for chocolate. So that's ADM, Cargill, the people who make uh, all your Easter bunny chocolate. I have this picture of positivefoodinc.com has this picture of praying hands and the serenity prayer, right? It was one of those Easter cards. And it's like, it was, it was ADM and Cargill chocolate that gets it from Ivory Coast that kills kids to do it. So I'm just like, what are you praying for? Are you praying that your child will come back? You know, <laughs> and the serenity prayer, you know, God get me, grant me the will to not buy chocolate that's not ethical I don't know so anyway where else where else well it's nice to know the Fred Myers guys yeah I mean I, there's rain for it or green whatever it is. green mountain green mountain okay. yeah the guy from uh, the guy from mr. green beans was kind of sad that Occupy would buy green mountain coffee and I'm like, uh, Occupy would buy from Uban. We don't have really, you know, any, you know, huge consistency as far as like, and we can have an Alec demonstration and, and 10 minutes later, I'll go eat at McDonald's, you know, so I'm yeah, sorry. Can, they can have a, they can have a uh, uh, don't privatize water in the gorge while meeting while they're drinking bottled water. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm sorry, but we're, we're, <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Anyway, not at the vigil, damn it. We have fair trade coffee. So, uh, no, there, there's this other one right next to it that's an organic. And I've checked them out a little bit, and they seem like a decent company. And I do believe that their source, 
So, so that's eight dollars a pound as opposed to twelve. Winco has organic coffee, but it's terrible. I had somebody put it back. Like they gave, they took a cup, and she's like, "Yeah, I gave it to someone else." I'm picky. I'm like, "Yeah, no, I'm with you." It was not well, good. It's got to be better smelling like Rumors coffee. Yeah. And like the hazelnut flavor. Ooh, really? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm part of Rumors, so this well, is like a fair gonna, trade it's annex. Going to be I am serving, upgraded. yeah, June 17th is what? What are we doing June 17th? I used to know. Something important? Yes, something important, so you should come. Is that no. the Earth First thing? No, it's uh, not Bradley Manning. Um, the Nestle. Uh, no. No, but it is a big thing. I mean, it's a... Goodness. What are we doing June 17th? I'm on chat, you guys. Occupy Portland. What's June 17th's event? If anybody knows, um, I don't know. I'll pick a flower. I'll make an arrangement of flowers from the City Hall garden, and I'll hold it in front of the screen and say that it's yours. And I'll be like, I gave you flowers. Whoever, whoever on Ustream can tell us what Occupy Portland's plan is for June 17th. Because I'm delivering coffee for rumors, and it's going to be fair trade. So. We're looking it up. Oh, you have to put up live stream on your phone. There'll be a delay. But after, because I think I'm on the old live stream right now. So you could put, you could get OPDX Live or Occupy P Town. One of our friends. Occupy the Pride. Yes. Okay. How could I freaking forget that? Occupied. Pride so or... we are serving coffee. We're serving fair trade coffee for Occupied. Waterfront Park on NATO Parkway between Southwest Ash and Pine. No, yep, wait, 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 wait. Info Dan, say again. Waterfront Park on NATO Parkway between Southwest Ash and Pine. Right on. So Coffee Sarah. Served by Mary of Vigil TV. Nuh uh. And rumors. No, it doesn't say that. Yeah, it does. What? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It says bring your favorite Occupy Center banners, picnic potluck to share and look fabulous. So, so have you talked to anybody about Occupy? Because I have. Talked to uh, Sarah. So did I. She showed me the website that she built. Yes, so I saw Sweet. that. So, here's us. Well, you right now. So, Dan, you saw Sarah Morgan's website <laughs> about Occupy, which was a blog. It's a blog, it's a WordPress, it's a WordPress, actually it's a WordPress site. So say occupy.wordpress.com? Yes, uh, uh, wait a second. Here, should be a link here, but there isn't. There's no link to it. Who puts the calendar in here? that. <clears throat> Not you. Yeah, see, yeah, I did put this on. <laughs> but I don't think she had the uh, WordPress. She didn't have the WordPress thing out yet. But uh, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's very detailed. She keeps putting more stuff on it. Oh, yeah? Well, see, the thing is, is that she is trying to flush out some of the detail about the messaging. Because... On one hand, okay, so over they're here, killing the rats. they're killing the rats across the street. We have live yahoos they're trying to kill the rats. That's a good thing. Yeah, uh, those rats have fatal.
mental illness. <laughs> We're going rat stomping. What are you guys doing? We're going cow tipping. Oh, cow tipping. But we're doing some rat stomping. Oh, so close though. I'm, I'm too I'm too drunk to go rat stomping. I better just stick with the cow tipping. Anyway, um okay. So here's the thing. The controversy. We learned a lot of stuff from Remy and others at Spokes Council that contrasted some of the facts presented earlier, like corporate sponsorship, who was, who wasn't, and the, the fact that you have to pay money to go into the door, but it's charity as opposed to a corporate thing. And so all of these things, it was looking like maybe the Pride Parade wasn't as much of a target of meaningful demonstration against something. Um, but the fact is, is that it's gotten more commercial appeal and just looks tainted. A lot of talk and a lot of, you know, putting our brand name and not a lot of serious action. All they're, all they're focusing on is, uh, let's see, right to be in the military and marriage. But the point was there's a lot of other issues. And, uh, you know, so focusing the message properly so that we don't alienate that entire community and get demonized by the press as being anti which they will because they called us racist. Remember that? When they decided that Occupy Everywhere was racist? So that was a press reaction. Well, I think that, not only, I think that's just a, when, when that was brought up around racism, it was just kind of a, a reflection of our community, our society in general is racist because we have racist institutions and it was just a reflection in Occupy, which is something that um, I think, like a lot of other issues, needs to be brought up. Um, and so, yeah, I don't think it was. I don't think that there was any specific incidents of overt racism, but it was more institutional racism that, that Occupy was or is. Um, Takes, is taking on that same kind of uh, uh, societal uh, culture, I guess. So, so, so similarly, I don't think that I don't think we, well with the LGBT thing. I think that this is carrying it. I mean, is bringing out is, other issues beyond uh, just the kind of the. the I guess what culture, culturally, what society kind of accepts right now, as far as um, what the Pride Parade is about. So it's kind of it's bringing out more issues. Right, but I mean, if they go after and try to say that we are, you know, anti-queer because we have a protest booth at the Pride Parade, not understanding what that booth is about which would be very easy to do because that booth so far has had some identity issues it's been involved it's become Where? nicer and nicer which booth? occupied oh. oh our presence oh occupied at the pride well parade. is it even there yet I'm it's going to, oh, it's going, to be. <coughs> it's going to be looked at either unfavorably or is going to be very well planned and so my point is Sarah's blog is discussing these things oh, okay. seriously yeah. because she heard those suggestions and those comments and she made notes of them about so you're saying you don't want it to be seen the wrong way I think you don't want people you, you don't want people to just kind of is, right. 
and then to reflect that message you don't want that ambiguous if you do protest you want that message to be clear if we do not have here's the here's the reason have you noticed that people are not patient with messaging like sometimes they don't have a large attention span or a thoughtful process because I call it Twitter brain give me your world view in 140 characters or less while I'm eating this sandwich or I gotta go and and so our messaging that's one of the things I really like about our vigil our vigil is you know sleep is a human right lift the ban I mean it has been from the beginning and it remains that now it means many things to many people but if somebody asks us you know give me in ten words what you want everybody can say lift the camp in the ban sleep is a human right just about everybody comes up with that you know so I think that in the end when all is said and done by the time we get to pride we're gonna have something that is quickly presentable easily understood just out of sensitivity because they certainly do not want to alienate or hurt anyone you know we do not want to have a feeling of being against the people in the parade you know we're not that's not what it's about in fact it seems like that this is for the same people I mean whoever whoever were, were having a parade a celebration of you know which is basically everyone but I think that, I that think, same spirit I, yeah I think I think having a celebration asking it to yeah, not be so capitalist and don't, yeah don't that, crawl it's, on yeah it's yeah it's, they're crawling that's, yeah. it. that's the thing yeah they're it's, opportunistic yeah. about well it's kind of like it's kind of like it's kind of like um with Obama and his declaration of uh yes he's now for same-sex marriage where before he was uh, for civil unions and and a lot of people said well he's been for it the whole time so this is kind of like it's kind of like that in, the, in that uh, the, Sarah and Occupy are bringing out a lot of issues that are a lot bigger than uh, marriage equality and What's the other Don't ask. Don't ask. Uh, yeah. Well, that's already been. Uh, but no, it's still there's still uh, yeah. military. Yeah. Well, I mean, there, I mean, it's like it's. I mean, that's those are so. Those have been <laughs> those have been the, the issues that the public has seen as the entirety of pride. You know, the, the behind everything for gay rights and and so forth. It's just been everywhere you look at ACLU is always military people who have been discriminated against they're now fighting in court um, and and again also with so I think marriage. it's I think it's 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 far deeper than that I think what, what Sarah is doing I think, because it, it's, it, it's educational right and so it's it's it's, it's, it's beyond just that kind of uh, kind of what will what will society allow yeah it's for L LGBT let's, let's say people. this the, the the pride parade is being sanitized the entire when you get corporations in you know um so because there's a lot you know there's a lot of things that i bet uh u.s bank or wells fargo or whoever else um is probably not gonna get behind you know the portion of the parade with the whips or the guys with the you know the the bears with the leather and fur you know i mean it's like okay so you, you love it when people are expressing their diversity if it's a diversity that you accept and if it's for these particular issues but there's a rainbow you know and not every every person is going to fit with a corporate agenda of, you know, their PR. I, just, I feel like we need to be more independent and not be censored by, you know, corporate sponsorship or anything. And I think that there has been some 
attempt to sanitize and to, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. But corporate sponsorship is actually seeming to come from small business, mostly local. So that was possibly a fact that is now being looked at more carefully. You know, who are, it's not Alec. You know, we're not, we're not dealing with that. Uh, U.S. Bank is not a, it, it's not a sponsor. It's a, they might have booth or something, but it's not a sponsor, it's a participant. And, uh, yeah, it looked like, so anyway, Sarah's blog, whatever that is, but I think it might be occupied.wordpress.com. Uh, that goes through exactly those sponsors and it lists some of those controversies and it asks for uh, more discussion with the purpose of getting that messaging known, you know, like we need to know what are we saying here. I mean, I nebulously can say I don't want you to co-opt Ride. I don't want you to commercialize and then begin to marginalize people who fall outside of what narrow ball of acceptance you have. Okay, put that on a sign. That was a terrible sign, what I just said. But that's as close as I can get until somebody writes a slogan. <laughs> you know? And it's got to start with, I love you. You know? I'm glad we're having this parade. Don't let it get co-opted. Don't let it get, you know, whatever. Well, yeah, and you wonder how how many, um, what percentage of people are involved of the LGBTQ um, population are actually involved or really care about this parade. I know a lot of people who care about this. A lot of people care about this. I mean, it's not a, a lip service. Thing. Or care about um, uh, marriage to replicate heterosexual tradition or religious tradition, or who care about. Um, well, it's more about equality, isn't it? Um, It depends on who you ask. Yeah. Because it sounds it's uh, it, that's the that's the argument. The argument is is that uh, uh, same sex marriages uh, if, or, or heterosexual marriages get these certain benefits. But uh, well, you know, that's another thing is that we didn't really ask a lot of questions about what marriage is until gays wanted to marry legally, and then people started pulling it apart, you know, what is marriage? It's very complicated, isn't it? It's, you have privileges in, you know, with the government and all sorts of other privileges that follow, like, I mean, you know, you have single and then you have married, you know, for X, Y, Z things. Um, then there's church, you get married in a church, and then people who, you know, who don't, you know, so, so they're like, okay, civil union. Civil union can be government stamp, but they call it something different. And then you have whatever ceremony you have that's spiritual or ceremonial, whatever. But, but that's when people started saying, well, wait a second. Why would you call it civil union for gay and marriage for straight? And that's where we get the equality. So I, I don't think it's been... Uh, I don't think it's just been a thought in conversation about how complicated well, the idea of marriage in the USA really is. What? Well, what how about how that? about just everybody just everybody, no matter what, gets treated uh, respectfully and everybody gets equal benefits regardless of their married status. So, let's say you want health care and you have a partner. 
yeah no it's well you know it's everybody's treated equally so regardless of if you have a partner or not so you you get you get those benefits there's no guard like this you know for me there's no you know everybody's everybody just got everybody's treated humanely everybody everyone everyone is treated humanely and everybody gets discounts regardless of their marital or single status or who they love or anything so you don't see the purpose of having any benefit whatsoever for the state of being married or add on to that having children and having those children be your family i no. and what if you work and you have a benefit from your company of health care for your family how do they determine whether or not it's just you and five roommates who <laughs> Well, everybody, you know, everybody gets equal benefits everywhere, all the time. So it doesn't matter if you work or don't work. Everybody gets, everybody gets uh, treated humanely. Okay. So that there's no question of, of. Well, that to me doesn't sound like government. To me, that sounds like community run. I mean, do you think that this is from federal government, or do you think that this is just from? It's for my brain. Do you think that we <laughs> should have it from our our community? Little co-op. Well, the argument. Towns. I mean, the argument is 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 so it's just uh, it's so archaic. I don't know. It just seems like I mean, you're arguing about treating people humanely. Who who gets treated better than other people? Yeah, yeah. Who? I see know, what you're saying. Uh, who has, who holds the status in society, who this, that, so it's, uh, you know. Right. And you that, don't have, and that's, I think that comes back to the, uh, the, uh, the, a lot of people could care less about the pride parade or marriage or anything like that because it's just, you know, that's, that's something that's built and we're supposed to be concerned about, we're supposed to, that's what we're, that, you know, that's a, a culture or something that we're supposed to buy into and feel good about or not good about. Right. You know, and, you're reminding me of that whole issue about when they have debates on television with, uh, say, two commentators where they split the screen. So right now, you know, there'd be someone on the other side. Oh, oh, shoot. You're on both sides of the aisle, buddy. All right, so there'd be somebody else. So somebody else is right over here. So I'll be this person. Hi. Okay, so now we have the person on the left. Um, and, and they say, you know, the hey, there's, best there's, game. There's Arnold or Bob or the guy that we're Blake. The best game ever that you should spend all your time on is Xbox. Okay, and you would say, no best game that you should spend all your time on is PlayStation and then the viewers are supposed to not come to this conclusion that they're supposed to just go out and buy a PlayStation or, or an Xbox they're the viewers the viewers are not given option three which is why are you telling me that I need to play a game all the time at all yeah. so option three or four what what are what are you talking about? So basically, whatever whatever the television presents as the two arguments are what corporations want you to be talking about, and the more it's like important argument. It's like argument, all the different car commercials with Toyota and Ford and Chevy and all that. They could care less which car you buy as long as you buy a car. I suppose. As long as you keep staying in debt and owning that car, and and you know and working to you drive a car, you know, but they don't, right. it doesn't matter what car you drive. So you're talking about, okay, do people really care about these marriage issues? Do they care about the pride parade? How many people really care about that if many people have already well, left it's like what, what, it's, yeah, what behind I'm, I guess these I'm saying what, archaic... What percentage of LGBTQ people really are concerned, I mean, I shouldn't say concerned about it, but 
spend their time worrying about or right. get, getting involved in it or are they or are they just living their lives right and, and not buying into and maybe, not buying into the political garbage and, and maybe and, previously you know. would have been much more concerned but for the past 20 years have had a civil union already so why yeah. now yeah well it's and it's like who who's who's benefiting from it who's benefiting from the argument it kind of sounds like we expect yeah. everybody to want to join this club like who's, it's who's, better over here who, well yeah and who's who's thinking is is saying that some people are better than other people and are you going to even bother being involved in that argument but i think the issue of rights and equality um, has to keep well going or we don't actually have a consciousness change so in the process of fighting over whether well, or there's not, all those people who just do it yeah but you can see though that the fight over getting marriage equality you know getting you know non-discrimination in military well, it's like how All many, what percentage, what percentage of LGBTQ people hang out in gay bars? I don't know. Thirty-five. Seven. Seven. I didn't. I wasn't even kidding. I mean, I wasn't even formulating a joke when I threw so, out a random number. But that's what that's yeah. what you know people see when. I didn't they... really think thirty-five. <laughs> I was just coming up with a number because I didn't think he really no, had a to... number. So it's, you I mean, had that, a number. You surprised if, me. See if that's what you're. If that's what you think. I'm not you. I'm not saying you. I do. If, I think I'm it's saying, 35. I'm saying the general population <laughs> believes that this is the stereotype of a of a LGBTQ person. I don't think you know? anybody really believes. Well, I mean, that and people and, and are all in yeah, and gay if bars. Everybody, if everybody believes, holds on to the stereotype that LGBTQ people are all um, human rights campaign people or people who are putting on the pride parade or paying for it, you know. You know, so it's you know, or if you if you're wanting to get caught in that place where that's your only option, yeah, you know, or else you're living just living your life. Right. You guys go ahead and debate over whether I can get married, and I'll be over here living with my spouse. Right. And who said? And, <laughs> and why? Yeah. Why? You know. Why do why do people get married? Hey, what, look, you know, so look, there's a why bunch, should there, why there's should a bunch there, of straight people why discussing my ability to have a spouse that I already have. Hmm? Why do or, or I don't know. Or why why oh, even so consider why you. even consider uh, sexual orientation as an argument? Well, you know what? This is this is an interesting thing. This reminds me of how I dislike very much Obama. Now you can love Obama. I love Obama. I I I thought you might. <laughs> because I think I've heard you say that. I always I say it all the time whenever I get a chance. Well, there you. I gave you that chance. I no, dislike Obama, you very much. And the thing is, is but I, I feel, don't have any reason. I don't have. I have no reason to, to why. I don't know well, what his me, policies are. Let me let me finish finish what I I, I, I was saying. Think, I just think he's just really cool and he's got a great wife and kids and <laughs> a nice dog. Well, so here's the thing now, about here's the thing about Obama. I feel like I can celebrate how far we've come because I've been waiting all my life for a black president and I freaking hate him. And oh, I feel look, like look, I feel like that's what I got great. From my, uh, that's a skin. great. I've come so far. I'm already over it. God, he is a sexy guy on camera, isn't he? I know. Look at that. So, why are you showing me these zip ties? You cut them? Are these? Oh, those? Are those? Are those fills? No, no. these are for these are for the uh, paper mache pig. Oh, oh, for the paper mache oh, pig. Because Phil Phil texted me when he was being held by the cops. I was like, if you're under arrest, where are your handcuffs? He's like, I slipped out of them. They were zip ties. And I was t he was texting me. Oh, okay. So he was texting me. He's texting you. It's hilarious. What is Occupy about? What, I, I, I don't know what that means. Um, people before profit. Justin. How you doing, Mary? Hi, Garrett.
This is a camera, live oh, TV. Wow, is that okay? Office. Yeah, yeah. You can, hey. Hey. So, are you uh, new in town? Yeah, I live in Washington. Cool. Is that no. Hold on for a second. Yeah, go ahead. Be right.